Welcome to MJ Loves Toku, episode 69. I'd like to talk about Kamen Rider 01, episode 44. This is MJ, I love Tokusatsu, and I am, uh, I'm really surprised by the end of this show. Now, this is the penultimate episode, so there's one more, but, uh, where it's going is very interesting, and I don't know if I'm pleased. <laughs> I, I definitely didn't expect this. Like I said, it was, it was surprising, so... Um, I think I'm pretty happy where this has gone. Uh, there's a few exceptions, some things that I have issues with, but I kind of want to... Well, I, I'll, I'll start with the fact that I thought this was a great penultimate episode. The stakes are really high. Uh, everything is clearly set, and we understand what exactly is going on and what the issues are. And I understand how, you know, based on where everything's been building up to, uh, how... Uh, it can be that the fate of everything depends on these two men fighting. And uh, I'm I'm pretty cool with that. Uh, I think it's interesting. I like when you can get a conflict boiled down into two sides or two people representing two sides. Um, but I think the way that uh, Takashi has structured this is pretty interesting because uh, there's some nuance. And... It has enabled everybody to change. Everybody everybody in the show has had an arc that's delivered them to this place where this situation, the circumstances that they're in, is more impactful, it's more uh, painful to watch, and it's uh, emotionally resonant. And that's really great. They've gone from people that we didn't know to people that we did know, and whether or not we like them, they've changed and shifted, and we've got to see that. And uh, now they're all in positions where they're doing things that I certainly don't want them to be doing. But it's great to see them doing them, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Anyway, uh, I actually kind of grabbed a lot of quotes. Uh, actually, first I want to start off. This is episode 44. Uh, Genom Corp did the subs, uh, well, among other groups. But their title for the episode is There's Only One Guy Who Can Stop You, which is, of course, Zero One's. Uh, catchphrase, right? Anyway, the episode was originally aired on August 23rd, 2020, and it was written by Yu Takahashi. The director was Teruaki Sugihara. It'd be interesting to go back and see if Sugihara did the first two episodes as well, uh, and if they're doing the last two episodes, because, you know, it's a nice way to have things bookend, right? Anyway, there were a lot of things I liked, a lot of moments I liked from the characters. Um... <laughs> This uh, final scene where the two of them in their Kamen Rider arc, you know, modified forms are coming at each other in this, uh, you know, battlefield basically full of weapons. I kind of hope to see them pick up a bunch of weapons and use them against each other. Two guns, a gun and a sword, two swords. Of course, I don't want them fighting, but if they're going to fight, it may as well look as cool as possible, right? Um, so anyway, that, that's kind of fun. But I actually pulled some uh, some lines from the episode that I want to discuss. And, uh, I mean, there's some things I don't really care about, so I'm not going to deal with them. Uh, they're just kind of cool images, but let me see. So, in the beginning of the episode, we have <coughs> peaceful protesting human gears. Peacefully protesting human gears, is what I meant to say. And one of them asks, you know, so humans really do think of human gear as just tools. And... I'm not exactly sure how, like there were, it's funny, I liked this, but there were some leaps of logic. Now, uh, I almost think that the, not the theme necessarily, but Takahashi might mean something else, but what I took away from this is that violent mobs are evil. <laughs> and I kind of question, you know, how does the actions or failings of one individual justify the purposeful doing of wrong by a mob. It doesn't really work, does it? Uh, these human gear are upset with Aruto because he has become the Ark. They call it a betrayal that he becomes Ark. I guess if we kind of trace things back and think about and reflect on how things have gone, we can maybe come to a better answer uh, regarding this. So, the Ark was corrupted by 
<laughs> humans. The Ark was corrupted by uh, a Matsugai 12, 13 years ago now. It made Daybreak Town, the Daybreak Town incident happen where a bunch of human gears went berserk and killed a couple people. I don't know how many now because there were lies about it and stuff. Um, but they... Well, that happened. Over a decade went by, and then Metsubo Jinrai started acting. And they corrupted Humagear, turning them into Magear, uh, causing them to be destroyed. For a time, they were simply destroyed. You know, maybe their data was lost, whatever. They weren't able to be backed up. Then they were being backed up. Then they were being saved from turning into Magear. Uh, by you know the metal cluster hopper power, uh, he was able to revert them and kind of drive the mod gear programming out and reset them without having to destroy them and all that stuff and bring them back to who they are. So, you know, then we had Comrade Arc form by taking the singularity data from the four members of Metsubo Jinrai, and uh, the Arc was this. You know, driving force behind all of this, set in motion by Matsugai, by having the malice of humanity revealed to it. When Hirobi finally kills uh, Izu, Aruto, who had been always optimistic up until this point, uh, his heart is broken, he gives in to malice, and he embraces the darkness, he embraces the power of Kamenator Ark, he embraces his pain and chooses to act like Hirobi acted, he chooses to act in uh, w with malice, with evil in his heart, and to just not care. Uh, I mean, he's he is intentional about it because he's sad that he ends up killing Jin on accident, but he intended to kill Hirobi. Um, Somebody once said, "Like, why is attempted murder a lesser crime than murder? I mean, you're murdering; you're just bad at it. So you were unable to, you know, actually connect." and kill the person you were trying to kill, really murder, not kill, because there's a difference uh, that people need to recognize, and, uh, from my perspective at least, anyway, and, you know, why shouldn't it be the same charge? You tried to murder him, but you failed, so why not get the same punishment? I think it's an interesting, an interesting idea. Anyway, uh, why do the human gear feel betrayed? Ark is another, Ark's kind of like a human gear, right? It's an artificial intelligence. The human gear are filled with artificial intelligence. Uh, you know, human gears are able to reach singularity. They're able to develop hearts within them. There's a soul to them, so to speak. I don't know if Ark has a soul. Maybe it does, and its soul has just been corrupted by evil. Because something I've been saying all along the show is that obviously, and you know, maybe because I'm not six or seven or whatever the target demo is for the show. Obviously, human gears and humans aren't that different. They both have hearts and souls. They can both be capable of great good or great evil, just depending, so to speak, on the input. And, I mean, I don't know. It's interesting to me. Yes, a human, uh, a Matsugai, corrupted the Ark, filled it with malice, uh, probably because of what he had, had done to him by his father. He was, so to speak, the father of the Ark, and he poured that same malice into his creation and it corrupted Hirobi among others uh, but not too many others and then finally the abusive destructive actions of Hirobi caused Aruto to give in and succumb and I know I, I sound like I'm really repeating myself but I don't think I am too much um, and the failing of the one man who believed in human gears and who wanted them to have equal rights basically and to be treated with respect you know more than any other he had championed the dream of his grandfather Kornosuke and taken it that much further and showed how uh how equal to humans human gears can be he got them all this way and then he did something wrong he <laughs> reacted terribly to a terrible set of circumstances and now they are one protesting for, you know, equal rights, and two, uh, very quickly and very easily becoming violent because of it. It sounds to me 
like malice is overtaking the human gears and like uh Takahashi is almost proving the point that maybe they don't deserve rights, which is not what I'm saying, and just, which is not what I think. I think just the premise of the show is skewed a little bit, and like what people are saying is skewed and twisted a little bit in order to produce conflict so that it almost nullifies the effects of what they're saying. And it almost makes it not make sense that Ark Hirobi, a Matsugai, uh, could be responsible for many, many deaths of humans uh, whose lives I'm going to say I value more than human gear just a little bit and then uh, you know, through his grief and stuff, because his little sister was murdered, he uh, accidentally kills, and that's the thing he accidentally kills uh, you know, the little brother or son of this human gear, Hirobi, in, you know, being Jin, of course, and that's the thing that I understand, like, how that's leaving a stain on his soul and how that's terrible for him and why he feels like he's too far and he can't be forgiven. I just don't understand why, despite all the good that he's done, nobody seems to want to really give the guy a chance, or the mob doesn't, at least. And like I said, I think this is accidentally teaching against the dangers of the mob. I'm going to move on. I think it's really interesting, Yaiba's arc, or where... She is. She originally saw human gears only as tools, and you know she had kind of seen herself only as a tool. But now we're at the point where she is back in control of Ames, and she sees the problems with uh, oppressing and coming down on the human gear, and she wants to find a way to uh, help them process their grief, process their anguish, process what they're going through, so that they can come out the other side of it better, stronger, happy, and able to move forward just like her. Uh, She's got that empathy, and it's really wonderful. Uh, Real quick, we have Naki, who questions Aruto giving up on human gears and giving up on his hope for them because, well, which is funny because it's a, a direct, you know, inversion of where she was at before, uh, she, you know, being part of Metsubo Jinrai and taking part in hurting people. Although, I don't know. For me, I, I always felt like she was less villainous and more, I guess, opportunistic, I would say, in the way uh, that allegiances, swift, allegiances shifted as soon as possible. Uh, she assisted Fu in breaking out against, or breaking away from uh, Thouser and Zaya. Then there was the hacking of Zaya and the, you know, helping of Metsubo Jinrai. So it's just kind of been all over the place. And I, I think having been controlled and manipulated for so long, uh, Naki could really see the utility in respecting the dreams of others and wanting to leave individuals free to pursue those dreams. And I don't think it's just my own political biases, uh, you know, reading into the text what's there. I think that's I think that's part of what's there. That because Naki had been uh, enslaved and forced to do certain things and to help enslave Fua and had seen the damage and the pain from that firsthand that Naki didn't want to turn around and have that be uh, forced on other people. Speaking of, you know, Naki and Fu's relationship, I really love, well, first of all, I think it's lame that uh, she doesn't get to use Japanese wolf, that she throws it over to Fua and he uses it. And the only good thing about it is that Fua and Aruto are foils for each other. And Fuo points out, hey, you're acting like how I used to act. You're reminding me of who I was, and that wasn't a good, that I wasn't in a good place, that wasn't a good, you know, version of myself, and I don't want that, and I don't want that for you, and it's terrible. It hurts for me to watch you, which is funny, because it hurt for me to watch Fuo be who he was early in the show, uh, or through most of the show, really, like three quarters of it. Anyway, uh, I do like that the progress key for that Japanese wolf has two heads, represents to me anyway, I'm sure it's supposed to represent the fact that it was Fua 
and Naki working together. And I like how it's, uh, you know, a pretty simple shift on, I guess, Rampage Wolf it would have been. But it's neat because it is using uh, that power, that human gear power, that, you know, uh, arc power, so to speak, a little bit. But it's also, you know, Fu's heart. And it's Naki breaking away from that control and that pure malice. Uh, so I like what it represents and I just think it's really neat. Aruto is expressing a very, gosh, he's not an evil writer. He wasn't taken over by Ark. Uh, he's suffering and he's wallowing in his grief and misery. And I think it's really interesting because uh, in my estimation, my preferences, my understanding of how the world should work and um, how to be successful in it, I believe that you need to have a grieving process. Aruto is not being allowed to have a grieving process, possibly just for the stakes of the show, possibly because it's not part of Japanese culture or whatever. But the fact that he wants to be alone, and I'm not saying that because Japan, I'm saying that because Yu Takahashi is a Japanese man living in a Japanese culture, making a show that's part of Japanese pop culture. So obviously the culture that this is created in is going to affect uh, how it's written, what messages it, it has, what subliminal messages it has, what unintentional things are in there. So I don't know how grieving works in Japan. I know in America when people are grieving, they often don't really allow themselves to grieve and process their loss and pain. And that's not really healthy. And uh, I have a more ancient perspective on how such things should be dealt with. And you take like a week and just kind of sit, sit in the pain and people try to comfort you. Uh, there's a lot of quietness, a lot of stillness, and there's not much, <sighs> there's not much opportunity for you to run away from your feelings. And all this episode, and maybe even all last episode, uh, Aruto is just trying to run away from his feelings. He's not processing, he's not dealing with, he just wants to be left alone, possibly in order to keep his pain and anger and rage going because if he stops and deals with people who he knows and cares for and who he's helped get through difficult things in the past, he knows that it'll pull him out of that dark place and he won't be able to do the things that he wants to do. He won't be able to just murder her. I mean, this would be this is a vengeance killing. I mean... It's somewhere between a vengeance killing and a murder, and uh, you would think he would just stop, but uh, it, it's understandable. And I like the fact that uh, we're at the end of the show, and our hero has gone through so much and has grown so much, but that he's been driven to this point where he's faced with the desire, the opportunity, the will to just wantonly kill another, another who... He had fought to free, to defend, to protect all these things. And uh, I just think it's really interesting. Like I said, Fuwa telling Aruto that he's acting just how he used to. Very impactful to me. I really like that. Really appreciated it. I love the showing of humility and the showing of equality with the human gear that happens. There's this great scene kind of in the middle of the episode where it's intercutting between uh, heat and intelligence, the protest, uh, you know, that's going to turn into a riot with Ames there trying to stop him and, you know, Yaiba showing up and then uh, Fua trying to stop Aruto and then also Ikazuchi and, uh, and Hirobi's conversation. And the way it's structured is really beautiful. Uh, as you go from each scene or vignette or I don't know what to call it necessarily they are all building upon each other they're all driving forward the same idea the same question showing the same struggle being dealt with by different people in different ways which I thought was a highlight of Common Raider x also written by Yu Takahashi that it was able to set up a single problem and then it threw different people at it coming from different perspectives and it showed what their answers would be, what their solutions would be, what their ideas were, how, who they were 
as people affected how they answered those questions. And I think that's really neat, and I think it's done beautifully here. Uh, Shasta joining in with the vice president and the other guy. <laughs> I don't know his title or what he does there at, uh, at Heaton um, to plead, like, do the, as far as I know, the greatest gesture of asking for forgiveness and pleading in uh, their culture. They're bowing, they're prostrate down in front of these human here, asking them to forgive them and to, like, give a chance. It's it's such utter submittal uh, that it's, uh, it was really impactful. It was really beautiful. I, I honestly, I got teared up here um, and watching the human gear see that like they're just that they're respecting them. They're acknowledging them as equals and maybe even greater. I don't know if that's possible, but definitely like as equals. Um, it was really awesome. And then Yaiba getting hit by one of the protesters who for no reason, like Yaiba, <laughs> I think at this point Yaiba had gotten She'd gotten aims to lower their weapons. Uh, they were kind of going to attack the human gear there protesting, and her actions caused them to stop. And then one of the protesters, a maid, uh, goes in and attacks her and hits her. And at that point, one of the aims guys, who they're all loyal to Yaiba, you know, she's their boss, uh, she puts out her hand to stay him because he's going to shoot. And then she turns to the girl and puts her hand on her shoulder, gives her a smile like... I know, like, and um, she's empathizing. She's like, I get it. You're hurting. I know that you're upset, uh, and I'm going to help you through that. And despite the fact that she, you know, may or may not get to end the show as a common writer, because, like, Fua was able to become, uh, was able to transform again, but she wasn't. But then again, can she, as an engineer and whatnot, just, like, rebuild the chip in her head or whatever to enable herself to do that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't care. I don't think she needs to. I don't think she needs to become a common writer again. Of course, it'd be cool to see, uh, you know, Valkyrie again doing her Valkyrie stuff. But like where she is now as a character is just so awesome, and, and it's shown so much growth, uh, and it represents so much. And uh, I, I just, I really appreciate it. I'm glad for it. Uh, let's see. Hirobi gets his new driver. It's fine. Whatever. He's all about destruction now. And I, I think it's funny that. Um, his belt has a, a jingle. It says, The conclusion uh, after evil climbs the top of the highest mountain of rock. Like, it's saying he's the evilest evil he can possibly be. And that means something. Uh, you know, forget more relativ relativism. This show has in it a certain ethos. And it's saying that, yeah, this guy's being evil. He's being bad. And he shouldn't be doing what he's doing. I just think it's kind of funny that it acknowledges that. Uh, and I don't know if that's for the audience, uh, if it's supposed to be dramatic irony, <laughs> you know, is it for the kids to be clear that, no, this is still evil, guys. It, you know, it may look cool and it may seem justified, but this is evil. Uh, I don't really know. I don't know uh, what they're going for. I think it's interesting, maybe. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is such a great episode because it sets up all these stakes. It sets up all these, it like finishes or ties off these character arcs. And, and then it just puts it at a place where uh, I honestly thought, based on uh, Arto seeing his dad when he was contacting Zaya, connected to Zaya, I don't know, uh, that he was going to come back with like just the Zero One driver or something, or not, definitely not transform uh, using the power of the arc, or the arc key, or whatever. But he did that, so that was a little surprising, but I just, I wonder where he's at. And I gotta say, this reminds me of kind of the end of x but it even more reminds me of uh, the end of Kiva. Where, which I talked about previously, so I won't belabor it, but just like, I don't want to see these people fighting, but it's like they have to. Like, everything is aligned so that they have to be here in this place having this conflict with each other, and it's just, it's terrible. It's entertaining. Uh, I don't want it to happen, but it's, uh, I don't know, it's kind of enjoyable with how, how terrible it is and how sad the situation is. And I'm just glad that there's people on all sides of Aruto, and even Hirobi, who are telling them, don't do this, this is wrong, but it just goes to show that people who are this hurt. Uh, can just try to like dig in and shut everything else out and just focus on that pain until they've uh, used it to destroy their you know the target of their hatred and you know ultimately really they will destroy themselves and it's it's terrible uh, you know vengeance is a bad thing oh gosh anyway uh, I had one other thing I wanted to say but I'm having trouble remembering it right now. Um, let's see. Aruto giving in. Hello, bird. 
birds to you, I think. Anyway, um, gosh, he wants to be left alone. Uh, oh, I had a big problem. So Ames is apparently part of Zaya somehow. It doesn't make sense to me at all, really. But whatever, they they always have been. It's uh, the marriage of uh, you know cronyism. It's the private public partnership. Anyway, uh, it was kind of upsetting to me that Ames under President Williamson or whatever his name is was gonna like go and you know murder a bunch of human gear because it's a private organization. But then Yaiba or Ames becomes con- back in through a guy becomes part of the government again, and she gets to be the director like she should be. And uh, only at that point does the government come in and step in and save all these human gear. I'm sorry. Do you know how many people the Japanese government has murdered throughout the years? Do you know how many people the United States government has murdered throughout the years? Uh, Jim Crow, uh, you know, Ruby Ridge, Waco. All these things were acts of the government against free citizens. Uh, you know, human gear are regulated in a certain way. Are they regulated by private industry or are they regulated by the government? Oh, they're regulated by the government. So the second class citizen, you know, thing is not only part of the Japanese culture, uh, but it's also part of the government that these people elected. So like you're, <laughs> this is an analogy that, you know, government, you know, breaks your leg and then gives you a crutch. Oh, they've improved your situation. Well, they're the ones who broke my leg in the first place. So them giving me a crutch now isn't helpful. So that was kind of frustrating because Ames could have remained free and independent and just had a different, a righteous person at the head of it who, you know, could see clearly and do the right thing. But, uh, you know, couldn't do that. Couldn't do that. Anyway, I'm uh, going to step down from my soapbox now. I'm looking forward to the next episode. Uh, who knows, the review or the analysis next time might be really quick because it might just be, wow, that was amazing. This is why it's so good. This, you know, takes a step further on everything that I would pointed out from the last episode with how these characters have developed and grown and, you know, what messaging it has. If you enjoyed this, like, comment, and share to help me grow. Don't forget to subscribe to keep current with each release. Chat with me on Twitter at MJ underscore scribe. Visit mjmunoz.com slash podcast to find the multiple feeds in which I analyze Star Wars, Tokusatsu, comics, and more. Visit mjmunoz.com slash support for links to my Redbubble and coffee pages so you can help keep me doing the things I do. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Until next time, be well. And remember, you don't have to shout henshin to be a hero.